Hey guys, it's Story. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing the mid-year freakout book tag or the mid-year book freakout tag. Don't know which one is actually called, but nonetheless we're doing it today. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I dyed my hair. It looks black for some reason on camera, but it's just like a really, really deep brown with like a reddish tint to it. Um, but yeah, the camera's picking it up as like literally black. Let's just go ahead and get into the questions because I do not want this video to be a thousand hours long. So first off, there's going to be a lot of repeats in here just so you guys know. I have one book that is like the answer to four or five questions, um, but that just makes this a little easier, so I'm sure you guys don't mind. And that brings us to the first question, which is what is the best book you've read so far this year? And that for me is hands down Legendary by Stephanie Garber, but I'm actually not going to talk about this right now because it is my answer for number two as well, so I'm going to wait a minute to talk about this one. And instead I'm going to pick The Hating Game by Sally Thorne because that isn't a sequel, which you'll understand why I'm doing this in a minute. But I'm going to be filming my spring wrap up video here soon where I go over all the books I read this past spring, um, so I'll go into more detail about almost all of these books in that video so I will link that video down below whenever it is filmed and up on my channel but anyways I gave The Hating Game 5 out of 5 stars obviously since I'm putting it as my favorite book of this year so far I have a full review for this on my channel so I'll link that down below I'm not going to get too much into detail since I have a full review but pretty much this is like the typical hate to love trope um, it is contemporary which is really surprising that I have this as my favorite book of the year so far because I'm not a huge contemporary reader. I do like contemporary, but I am mainly a fantasy reader. But yeah, pretty much I was just like completely obsessed with it. I am obsessed with Joshua Templeman, who is the main male character of the story, the like love interest. And yeah, so the second question is best sequel you read so far this year. And that is going to be Legendary by Stephanie Garber. So this is why I waited to talk about this because I didn't want this to be the answer for both one and two. I'm going to try to not talk about this book too much because I will literally rant about it. You can ask any of my bookish friends. Like, I've talked about this book nonstop. All I'm going to say is, is that if you've read Caraval, you need to continue with the series. Don't question it. You will not regret it. Just pick this book up. The series get so much better with this book. We delve into more of the history behind their mother, their missing mother, Paloma. Paloma, that sounds really weird when I say it. Also, it's focused a lot on legend and this group of magical people called the Fates, which are really like gods and goddesses. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about it because it is a sequel, so I can't really like say too much about it, but it is really, really good. It's just a tad bit longer than Caraval. And the book I got is signed. Look how beautiful that is. I will link my release day at vlog down below as well. That was really fun to do. Next question is what is a new release you haven't read yet but really want to? And for this one, my answer is Truly Devious by, I believe her name is Maureen Johnson? That might be completely wrong. I'm going solely based off memory right now. This book has been on my radar ever since it came out. It first caught my eye when I saw the cover. It is my favorite color. A really like dark deep blue is my favorite color it's not real well it's more like cobalt blue or like electric blue read the synopsis and was really intrigued by the synopsis and then more and more people have picked it up and have loved it so I've wanted to pick it up ever since I just haven't gotten around to it yet I was going to put the cruel prince by Holly Black on here but honestly as time has gone on I'm just not as intrigued by the cruel prince anymore I think it's because there's been so many mixed reviews that I've just been kind of back and forth about picking it up. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And that for me is Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. So I read Strange the Dreamer last summer slash fall. It was the end of August, so it was like the end of summer going into fall. And I really did enjoy this book. I gave it four out of five stars. The only reason I gave it four stars instead of five is because it's extremely slow paced. It is a huge book. And yeah, I just felt like I spent too much time on this book when I could have read like a 400 page book and gave it five stars and been like completely happy. But nonetheless, I really did enjoy this book and I am continuing with the series. I did debate continuing with the series because I just don't know. I have a feeling all of her books, at least in this series, is going to be really, really slow paced. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to, but Lainey Taylor's writing is so beautiful. I really fell in love with some of her characters in this series and I don't really want to like leave them and not like read more about them so I am going to continue with the series. 
Use of Nightmares is my only anticipated read this year besides Legendary, which obviously already came out. Yeah, I'm super excited to get that book. And it's coming out around the time I read this book last year, so it's like kind of perfect. Yeah, I'm super excited for that. So the next question is your biggest disappointment. I have two for this one. The first one is 10 Things I Can See From Here by Carrie Mack. This is the worst book I've read this year so far. I expected to give it like three stars. That was just like what I was guessing to give it. I ended up giving this book one star. I went to read this so I could read about anxiety. I really wanted to read a book that has anxiety representation because I have anxiety myself and I just could not relate to it. Um, the main character's anxiety is nothing like mine. Her anxiety is kind of it's like obsessed with death. She's extremely fearful of dying and others around her dying and so she's like very anxious of the world in general and just like fears everything. And that's just like not, I don't relate to that. And so it really made me wonder if the author did have anxiety or not because I don't know, it just felt like kind of the stereotype of anxiety. But that's just my own opinion. Also, besides that whole thing, there was no character development, there's no character descriptions, there's no plot. In this book at all. If you read this book and you say there's a plot, if it is a plot, it's like a really bland and boring plot. I just felt like I wasted time reading this book, honestly. I expected to relate to this book. I expected to at least have an average like three star read and it was pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. And then for this next book, it wasn't as big of a disappointment as the book I just talked about, but that is The Wicked Deep by... I don't know who it's by, I can't remember. I listened to the audiobook and I have realized that I am not an audiobook person. The only audiobooks I like listening to are like motivational books or like spiritual books, stuff like that, because I'll talk about another audiobook I listened to later in the video that I really loved. But this was disappointing for me because I expected to at least give it four stars. I thought possibly maybe five because it seemed like the type of thing I liked. I love fantasy with mystery and with romance and I love the setting of this book. It's very like Forks-ish or Seattle-ish but like even more if that makes sense if you guys get what I'm saying. But nothing happened in this book until three-fourths the way through. For the first three quarters of the book I was so bored. I loved learning about like the history of the town and stuff but that's the only thing I liked about it. What was happening in the present was so boring and the plot twist so predictable. It, like in the beginning of the book, I had a couple theories of what could happen. I thought of the most predictable ones, but I was like, oh, this won't happen because it's just too predictable. And the plot twist was the most predictable thing to happen. So the plot twist didn't get me. I was a little bored, but I did like the writing and I did like the story overall. It just wasn't anything like crazy amazing for me so I did give this three out of five stars so it was a little bit disappointing for me but definitely not as bad as 10 things I can see from here. Biggest surprise would have to be Light is the New Black by Rebecca Campbell. This is the other audiobook I was talking about that I listened to and I really liked. I gave it five out of five stars. It is a spiritual audiobook. It's a little like motivational honestly. It's actually like super motivational, but it's definitely a spiritual book. This book made me realize I love listening to audiobooks like this. So if I am going to be listening to audiobooks in the future, it's going to be motivational slash spiritual books. It's not going to be like novels. I just don't like it as much. Anyways, this book just like gave me so much inspiration and motivation when I did need it. It calmed me down. It made me look at things in a different perspective and understand more. It's really hard to explain because these types of books are different for every person. I have been recommending this book to people I know like to read, you know, like spiritual books like this. So if you're, you know, interested in that or you want to try out a book like that, I would definitely give it a go. It is so good. I'm definitely expecting to reread this or re-listen to it. My favorite chapter out of the whole book is chapter 18. So if you're going to listen to any of it, listen to chapter 18 because it will change your life or it'll change your perspective for the day. Favorite new author. So for this one, definitely Sally Thorne. Oh my gosh, she only has one book out, but she has another book coming out called 99% Mine. And I believe it comes out in like October or December or something like that. I can't wait to pick that up. I can't wait for more from her. Also, another new favorite I discovered is Victoria Schwab. 
I read the Monsters of Verity duology and really liked it. I gave this book four stars and the second book 4.5 stars. I know she has like a huge fan base and so many people are obsessed with her. She's more like a four star author for me, but I did really enjoy the books that I did read from her and I do want to read more. She's just like, she's definitely a new favorite author, just not like a five star favorite author. And then also Holly Black is a new favorite. I read The Darkest Part of the Forest by her and really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I do enjoy her. I just don't know if again, she's like a five star author for me. New fictional crush. So I love Joshua Templeman from The Hating Game. I could reread that book like a thousand times and still like be in love with Joshua Templeman. And then also from Legendary, I am obsessed with Jax. Oh my god. He has another name, but I don't want to say it because that will spoil something for this book. But anyways, he is my new favorite villain. If I had to choose a favorite villain of all time, it probably would be Voldemort, but I think Jax is up there. Like, he's such an intriguing villain to me. Like, I kept wanting to read about him, and that's so weird for me. Like, usually I don't really care about the villain. Like, they're interesting, they're there, you know, for plot reasons, but I just loved him so much. And I can't even describe why I loved him so much because it's kind of spoilery. He's a new favorite character. He's a new favorite villain. He's a new fictional crush because I'm in love with him too. I actually shipped Tella and Jax more than I shipped Tella and Dante, which I have a feeling is an unpopular opinion. And then the next one is new favorite character. Obviously Jax again is a new favorite character, but I also really liked Donatella in Dante in Legendary. Donatella we don't get to see much of in the first book. And yeah, I just, I like her more than I did in the first book. I kind of found her a little bit annoying in the first book, but now I feel like I understand her more as a character, and I like her more. Same with Dante. He wasn't in the first book as much, but he is in the second book, and I really enjoyed him in the second book. And then also, August Flynn is a new favorite character. I just love his whole storyline of how he was born a monster, but he wants to be human. He's constantly like in his mind fighting with himself because he wants to be good so bad, but he was born as something bad and it's kind of like him battling between like just accepting who he is or trying to change something and trying to be you know better and different I just love that whole storyline I just love him as a character I love his character development from this book to this book oh my god if there was a question that was best character development it definitely would be August Flynn because like I thought I loved him in this book and then like the beginning of this book I was like he changed so much and I just like fell even more in love with him. So yeah. The next question is a book that made you cry. I actually don't have an answer for this because no book made me cry. I'm gonna be honest, I teared up a little bit at the end of this because I was so sad it was over and I had to wait another year for the next book. But like I didn't cry. The next one is a book that made you happy. For this one I'm gonna say Light is the New Black by Rebecca Campbell again because that again just really motivated me and inspired me and just like if I was having a bad day all I had to do was listen to a couple chapters and my whole day was different so definitely that and also just reading Legendary because I love this series so much. Favorite book to movie adaptation. So the only book to movie adaptation I watched this year was Fifty Shades Freed. <laughs> it came out on Valentine's Day. I went with my best friend because single AF. But anyways I don't know if I want to Put that as the answer because it was the only one I saw and I did really like the movie I'm gonna be honest I was a little disappointed by Fifty Shades Freed I loved the first and second movie I have not read the books I tried to read Fifty Shades of Grey I read like a fourth of it and then put it down and never picked it up again it wasn't horrible it just wasn't anything like I was dying to read at the time where things ended in the second movie they didn't pick up right away in the third movie and it didn't play out in the third movie so I was just like I didn't understand so I guess I will put that as this answer because I'm talking about it anyways favorite review you've written so I write reviews on my Goodreads account if you want to follow me it's always linked down below and for that I'm gonna put my legendary review any review like I actually take the time to like write more than a paragraph like I like but as for my channel the only reviews I've ever done on my channel is Carval, 
and the hating game the only one I've done this year is the hating game so I guess I'm gonna put that for my answer but honestly I don't think I'm gonna be doing book reviews anymore on my channel or if I do they're just not gonna be there's not gonna be very many of them I just feel like people don't watch book reviews anymore the only time I watch a book review is right when I finish a book so I understand why people don't watch book reviews on booktube so I just don't think I'm going to film them as much anymore. I did really, really enjoy those two book reviews I've done so far. Um, so there might be one or two more in the future, but um, at least for right now, I'm not going to be doing um, book reviews that often. The next question is the most beautiful book you've bought this year. So again, you guys are probably getting annoyed, but I'm going to answer with Legendary. Just look at it. Like, I don't even really need to explain it. But then also, I'm going to answer it with Bad Romance by Heather Demetrios. This is not a new release at all. I just love the floral of this. I've shown this on my channel like a thousand times now just because of the cover. I do plan on reading this this summer. I will link my summer TBR down below as well. It's my most recent video. But I feature this in there too because I do plan on reading this. And the very last question is books you need to buy by the end of the year. So I have a lot for this one. First off, Truly Devious. I told you guys how it is a new release, like I really wanna read this year. That is like number one on my list. Second is A Million Junes. I don't know the authors of any of these books, I'm very sorry. But A Million Junes, I have wanted to read this ever since Haley and Bookland talked about this over on her channel. This was actually on Book of the Month and I almost got it as my Book of the Month but I ended up choosing something else. And I thought about it ever since and like have regretted not choosing it. And then Haley read it and really loved it so I've wanted to pick it up ever since. Also, The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I have wanted to read this ever since Emily over at Books with Emily Fox talked about this. I can't even remember why this intrigued me so much, but I'm pretty sure this is like her favorite book of the year or something like that. And she gets like super excited about it when she talks about it. And I remember reading the synopsis and seeing the cover and being just like super intrigued. I think in a recent video, she said it's not out in the US yet, but it's coming out here soon. So I need to figure out when it's coming out so I can pick that up. Also, I've really wanted to read The Secret History. I can't even remember who was the first person to talk about this, but so many people love this book and rave about it, and the Goodreads reviews are like amazing, so I've wanted to read that ever since. And then also, Muse of Nightmares, of course, I really need to pick up. I'm going to pick that up when it comes out. Probably going to do another release day vlog for that as well, because I'm super excited to pick that book up. Also, I think I'm going to get it at Barnes & Noble, because I picked up this book at Barnes & Noble around the same time that Muse of Nightmares is going to come out, so it's kind of like a tradition thing at this point. But yeah, that is all my answers for this tag. Please be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any more videos from me. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Deuces.